Today we're going to be talking about how to make the switch from Okta to Azure Active Directory within your ServiceNow instance. This is a pretty common use case if you're making the switch in an IDP. So for your identity provider, when you're cutting over from Okta to Azure AD, uh, you'll have a lot of applications that you have to go through and update their, their SAML settings. Remember, if you like this video, please hit the like button down below and hit subscribe. So let's talk about the steps you're going to have to do today. First, you're going to configure the ServiceNow portion. Um, if you already have the multi-identity provider installed, those plugins, then you can skip this step. Um, another step that we have is to show the SSO provider in the user form. This allows us to select which users make use of which IDP. Then we'll jump into Azure AD, we'll add the ServiceNow app, we'll configure the settings, uh, and then we'll add users and groups to the application so that they can use it. Finally, we'll test it out with a user. So let's get started. First, we're going into our ServiceNow portal, and we're gonna to go to the plugin section. Remember, we need to first make sure that the two SSO plugins are installed. So when searching for the SSO plugins, we can see that both of them are already installed. Um, if you don't have them installed quite yet, you can go ahead and install them. You'll need them to set up SSO for Azure AD. In this case, because we're already using Okta, for ServiceNow, we had them installed. The next location we want to go is to our user form. Open up any user, and what we're going to do is we're going to configure the form using form design. Inside here, we're going to add the SSO field. So if we scroll down, we're gonna add the SSO field. This allows us to change the IDP provider, the single sign-on provider per user. So in a multi IDP scenario where you have Okta doing most of your users, and then you wanna test out Azure AD, you'll want the ability to change your user at a user level, which IDP to use. So to do that, we have to add this field to our form, click Save. And then let's go validate. If we go back to uh, this user, Abel, you can see we don't have any SSO field. Uh, so let's go back, come back in. And now you can see that we have an SSO source. And this SSO source is the ID, the sysid of the entity provider. Great, so that's all we have to do on the ServiceNow portion for now. Let's switch over to Azure Active Directory. Inside of Azure Active Directory, we wanna to go to Enterprise Applications and add a new application for ServiceNow. ServiceNow uh, is listed in the gallery, and there's about 13 or 1,700 applications right now in the gallery. Some of them support SAML, some provide uh, secure web authentication, SWA, uh, but ServiceNow does have the SAML token. So we're going to go ahead and create this app. Great. So now the app's created, now we can manage it. And one of the things we need to do is set up the single sign-on. So currently it's disabled. Uh, we're gonna switch it to SAML and we're going to set up the base SAML configuration. So the identifier that we want to use is our URL to our instance. In this case, it's a dev instance. And we'll put that in and we'll set that as the default. We can remove that star slash uh, star dot service now. Um, it's not going to allow us to use a star. 
for the reply URL, what we're going to do is use the nav page dot do. So let's paste that in as well as the customer dot do. So we'll paste that one in as well. And you can have multiple of these replies. Next, our sign on URL is going to be nav page dot do. And uh, we're going to ignore the logout URL right now. We're going to leave that one blank, but you could also put that in as, as nav page. We're going to go ahead and save. Great. So now that our basic SAML, we're going to test that later. Now that our basic SAML is done, we can do one of two things. We can set up ServiceNow manually, or we can allow um, uh, we can allow Azure Active Directory to set it up. For purposes of this video, we're just going to let Azure Active Directory set it up and then look at the settings that it sets up. Um, this is also important to uncheck making uh, Azure Active Directory the default identity provider. If you're doing this as a test for just a certain uh, subset of users, you do not want Azure Active Directory as your default identity provider. When you make the switch from Okta to Azure AD, then yes, you want to make sure that the default uh, IDP is Azure Active Directory. So we're going to go ahead and configure now. And just like that, it's gone ahead and configured our service now. What we can do is go back into service now and look at the identity provider that it created. And so you can see we have a new one here called Microsoft Azure Federated Single Sign-On. Let's go in here. Now, you first need to double check, even though we told Azure Active Directory not to make it the default, it made it the default. So I'm gonna quickly update that so I don't disrupt my users. So coming back in here, you can see that all of the identity provider URLs and the service page homes, all of these are now filled out thanks to Azure Active Directory. We also have a X509 certificate there. Um, if we go to the encryption and signing, the uh, password key is going to be the default one unless you've changed it for Okta. Um, I believe that's SAML, SAML2SP is the password for your SAML vault. But the point is, is that we didn't have to do anything here, and we were able to set up Azure Active Directory as an identity provider. Great. So now let's test our solution. Uh, because we're going to test it with a single user, it means that I need to take the sys ID from our identity provider, which you can find in the URL. And we're going to go into our users, find one of our users. And we're going to update this SSO source column with SSO colon and then the sysid update. And then let's go back over to Azure AD and assign a user to our application. So back over in Azure AD, we're going to click on the users and groups for this app, add a user, select Adele, our test user, assign. Now I've signed in uh, to Office 365 as Adele, our test user. Right. Well, and so let's go find the app. Click all apps. Here is our service now. So once you get added to the app, whether it's through group membership or direct access, you'll see the app in the all apps area. Your users could also use the my applications. This would be more native to them if they're coming from Okta. A very similar interface. You can create different sections, um, categorize your applications, 
And here is our service now. So let's go ahead, we'll click in. See, we're redirected and boom, we're into, we're into service now as our user, Adele. Uh, and again, that is just Adele who can use Azure Active Directory. The default identity provider in ServiceNow is still Okta. So we look back here. This Okta is still our default, or it should be. <laughs> so uh, let's make it a default again. So uh, luckily, Azure makes it really easy to migrate from Okta into Azure AD. Uh, once you test out all of your uh, applications, you pick the weekend that you want to go live, or if you want to do it staggered, you can do application by application um, and bring them over to Azure. So hopefully you found this video uh, educational. If you did, please hit the like button. Uh, if you need to contact us, reach out at info at netwoven.com uh, or leave a comment and again subscribe to our channel thanks